welcome to Abe Dreger's Trapping Adventures. Okay guys, what I'm going to talk about here a little bit is preparing your animals so you can get the most out of your animal. I always, my, my, a big thing for me is if you're going to take an animal, uh, let's treat it with respect and uh, prepare it and, and, and something that you can be proud of. That's, that's very, that's very big for me. I'm not a I'm not a believer in, in, in killing something and leaving it, or or uh, you know I'll do something with it yet one day and then you end up throwing it in the garbage or putting it up where it's where it's just absolutely unsellable. Um, there's a lot of ways you can uh, you can sort of fool the fur grader. I've watched fur graders handle pellets. They're very good at what they do. But they go through these pelts extremely fast. And any animal that has the fur facing out, they're harder to breed. Um, because they can't look at the leather. Like beaver, like aquatic animals, the leather is out. They can look at the at leather, they can give you a better, they, they can do a better job. But with anything that's fur out, there's things that you can do that can actually uh, help you get a better price for your animal. I mean, eventually you can see the difference on these three coyotes. You know, this coyote here is worth, is, is worth very, very little money. This one and this one, these are nice coyotes. They're all large coyotes, extra large, couple, three, four extra large. This coyote here was by far my largest coyote in these three. And you can see that all three coyotes are similar size. This coyote was way bigger than this one and this one. These were also large coyotes, but this one was way bigger. There's a couple ways, I, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's guys, I, I, I've gone to look at their furs, you know, they want to kind of get, because like, I, I put up furry uh, skinning demos almost every year. Um, and I, I go look at other people's furs all the time and they ask me, for my opinion. Um, and one huge mistake, huge mistake these guys do is they'll, is they'll put their animal on their stretcher and then they'll they'll take your forming board and they'll yank it apart. And they'll have a coyote that's this wide and this short. Well, the fur grader takes, he puts his finger right here at the base of the tail, right here, and he takes the measuring tape to it. That's how you're going to get your coyote size. I, I believe there's three major things that you get um, that will bring your value up. One is your coyote, your, your, how heavy is your coyote? And, and this goes for any animal. How heavy is it? Is it a semi-heavy? Is it a light? Is it a heavy? Like this coyote here is a heavy. This coyote is a heavy. This coyote is a sin. Okay, so th there's nothing, very little you can do about it. But if you take this coyote down, put it on the board, and you take and you yank on it as hard as you can, pin it, pull it as hard as you can this way, you're probably going to have a semi. Because what you're doing is you're stretching the fur, and it's not the fur isn't close together, so it's not a stick. You don't want to do that. Another thing that the fur breeder looks at is the color. <coughs> so, those two things, the color you can do nothing about, the coyote or the lynx or whatever you have, it is what it is. You can do nothing about that. Um, the semi and the heavy, there's little that you can do, but I've seen guys overstretch their animals and they're degrading their pelts. So you can do something about that. But the size you can do a lot with. Now I've seen guys take, they're going to get this small coyote or a small coyote, you're going to get it in a, a two extra large and they're just reaping on it. You're not doing yourself any favors. You have what you have. But, 
in a different video, maybe maybe in the same video, I'm going to skin a kite. And I'll show you when I make my first cuts how you can you can actually gain probably an inch on your kayak with your first cut. I can explain it to you a little bit, I will do it again. Uh, when you cut up from your vent hole up to your up to your um, up to your ankles on, on your on your kayak, uh, you skin around the vent hole and then up. The vent's an inch, so that gains you an inch. Gains you an inch right here. If I turn this kayak around, okay? You can see where my finger is right here. Okay, they don't measure from here to here. Here's the base of the tail. That's, oh shoot, that's two inches I've gained on this kite. I've gained two inches on this kite by doing that. That's a lot. That is a lot, uh, that's a much bigger kite right there. And I never overstretch this kite. Now, another thing is, what kind of, board are you using? Are you using an extra large board for a small kayak? Are you using, I like to use actually almost a smaller board than what the kayak needs to be on. And there's a couple reasons. Now, you can see this kayak is much narrower than this one. It's probably a little bit too narrow. This is the perfect kayak right here. This kayak is extremely, it's, it's a little bit narrower. This one's a little bit wider. The reason this one is wider because this was such a large kite, I didn't need to try to, to put it on a smaller board and, 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 and try to, to get a little bit more that way. Um, because it was already, this is a three, four extra large ready. So there's no need for that. This kite was quite a bit smaller. What I did was I, I put it on a board that's, a, a, this is a bigger board. It's wider in the nose, so that shrinks your animal. This is a, a smaller board. I put this kayak on a smaller board because if you go wide, you use you lose length. Okay, so I can gain a little bit there. Now, I'm not reefing on these kites. Pin them. I put them on the board. I slide them on. I might make it so the fur is just, you know, it's it's not tight, but it's not loose. It's hard to explain, I guess. There, I'm sure there's a word for it. But I'm not reaping on it. I'm just putting my pin in, pulling a little bit, and putting the pin in. I'm not pulling on this this high to get these pins in. Okay? So this kayak isn't overstretched. There, there's lots of room for that kayak to shrink. All good. Then after I've, I've made my first pins, actually, on the leg side, first two pins on the bottom of the leg, then what I'll do is I'll open this stretcher up to where, you know, I'll open it up. Okay, that's good, you know, you, you don't wanna, you don't wanna do that, you don't wanna leave it too loose, you just, same as the length, you just, you just wanna open it up, just so it's, you know, there's, there's some play in it, because that kayak, as it dries, it shrinks, right? You wanna let that shrink somewhat. Not too much, otherwise, it, it, you don't get a good product, but. So, you can control the size of your animal. I, I'm a huge believer in that. <coughs> and uh, so those are your three major things. It's, it's the color of your animal, how heavy is it, like the, the fur, and, and size. And you, you have to remember, if you have, let's say you have a heavy kayak and it's a two extra large, okay? Uh, and you have a three extra large, the same kayak, um, that one size is probably gonna be 30 bucks. Now that does might not sound to a lot, but if you catch 100 kayaks or 200 kayaks, or if you're catching any number of, of animals, that is gonna add up in the long run. So, and the reason I'm putting this video out there is because I've had many, many, many conversations with, with uh, trappers, uh, I've, I've, I've looked at the whole, there's, I'm not the best skinner in the world, I'm gonna tell you that right now. But I've went and looked at a lot of guys' um, finished product, and I'm a little bit disappointed when I see, they are out there, you know, they're putting the effort in, and the hard work, and to catch these animals, 
And then when I look at your finished product and I see a fur that's worth 100 bucks, and I can see they're going to get maybe 40 for it, it's disappointing for me. You know what I mean? Um, my, uh, my son, he has a friend uh, <coughs> that got him into uh, rabbit snaring. And I think I'm going to have some videos on that yet. Or I might even put them out before this video. I don't even know when I'll put this video out. But, um, and he's catching rabbits. And at first, you know, I've never actually went out and targeted rabbits. So I'm just as green as he is. So it was fun for me too to, to learn something new. And, uh, you know, he caught his first rabbit and, and the joy I saw in his eyes and, and the ter determination that I saw that, you know, um, we're skinning this, this rabbit and uh, taking the meat and we're gonna eat this rabbit. It was just awesome, awesome to see that my boy had that in him. Like, he killed something, he wanted to use it. And we ate it, by the way, it was awesome. Very, very good meat. Um, so, you know, let's just make sure when we, when we go take an animal, that we, we put it up so it's, uh, you know, that, that it looks nice and that we can get the most out of that animal. Now, um, uh, for me to say that I've never thrown an animal away is a lie. I threw a coyote away this year. It was uh, so unhealthy, um, full of mange, and uh, I don't know what else it had, but it was, it was nasty. I skinned it, and I started fleshing it, and I just couldn't do it. It was, it was just too, first of all, I was a little bit scared, you know, that, 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 that kind of stuff can transfer to humans, so I wasn't going to take chances. So, you know, there's exceptions to, the, to that, but got a nice looking animal like this, or this, beautiful type. Put them up, get them over for your money. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so here's some, some links that I put up. And I got two more kites to go. Two are on the board. And we're ready, ready to rock for for the next uh, hour or so. I should have these kites done, and then it's back to work.